Thank you, thank you so much. Um, and thank you, Patagonia. You guys are, are a rock star for two years in a row. Thank you, thank you so much. We wouldn't have this cool space had it not been for them. We'd be out in the street and that's not fun. So this is really cool. So thank you so much. So my name's Marcus Robinson, co-founder of Ride for Racial Justice. And you're here today. We're celebrating our fourth annual community ride. And we're just excited that we've lasted four years, right? Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, it was, it's been a big undertaking for our organization. Uh, the first step was us getting our 501c3 status, and we achieved that in our first year. And, and probably by August, Neil, we will have trained 80 athletes to race at Steamboat Gravel. And speaking of Steamboat Gravel, um, I'll let Neil talk about all that, that other stuff. So, because he's going to do some introductions, and you know I talk too long, and Neil <laughs> talks even longer than that. But um, again, thank you, Pat, going to your team. Uh, Ari, you're the best. And Hayden, this is for you, buddy. I know you're on vacation. And with that, I'm just going to turn it over to Neil because he talks better than me. <laughs> uh, that's not true, um, but. We're all here today um, because of, you know, an event that was something very much not a positive thing. And unfortunately, um, you know, back in 2020, many of, the world, many of us here um, watched another black man be murdered by a police officer. Um, it's happened before. It's happened I don't know how many times since. That was a seminal moment where I reached out to my friend Marcus just out of the, you know, I knew there was a lot going on. I live in Boulder, so I live in a little bubble. I'm a white guy. I live in a bubble. I'm, I'm not always confronted by a lot of challenges. And I reached out to my friend Marcus just to check in, just say, hey, how are things going? And it wasn't going well, right? You know, June of, June of 2020 was what, there was a lot of turmoil. There was a lot of things going on. And, and um, for me, you know, a bike has always been a thing where I could just go out whenever I want to do what I want, you know, have very little, few limitations. And in talking to Marcus, it was um, not a reasonable decision for him to go outside and ride his bike at that point. And I was like, that freedom of movement, of choice, of being, of, of, of having the ability to just, as you choose, do what you want without any potential repercussions, thoughts in the back of your mind or real concerns. Um, was not the same for my friend, and that is absolutely not okay. None of us, regardless of what color we are, who we love, what we look like, where we come from, what language we speak, what, what religion we have, any of those things, there, there's, there should be no differences in access and opportunity in anything in any way. We can't fix everything, but we do have an area here. We use the bike as, as our place to have freedom. And so we're trying to provide more opportunity, more access for those same freedoms for everyone, regardless of where you're coming from and what your background is. And so Ride for Racial Justice is, is this thing that is growing. And so we encourage everyone out there to have conversations on the bike that are sometimes difficult and so you know none of this is necessarily easy but change like this is necessary so there's a lot of words that people say sometimes and on social media yeah we support that like but what are you doing like who's showing up who's doing work and that's one thing with ride for racial justice that we're out we're doing work we're creating some change we're trying to move the needle endurance sports has been super white still is super white, right? You know, if you go to any marathon, you go to any bike race, I mean, it is not uh, an, an, a representative sample, you know, in this country or in many others. We're helping to move the needle. We're trying to provide more opportunity 
for individuals from varied backgrounds. And so Steamboat, we thank you for your help and partnership in being able to move that needle forward. You provide a huge um, opportunity for us and for, for the riders that we're working with and the individuals. Pause right there. Shout out to Steamboat right now. Amy yeah. Cherry. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Micah. Everyone else from Steamboat that helps provide those opportunities is huge. Marcus and I have been friends for a while. We go, we go back pretty far, but we have not been able to do this alone. And I want to bring up a couple other folks that are huge uh, in being able to continue to expand opportunity. First, we got Alicia, who's also one of our board members. She showed up. We had our uh, July ride in Boulder 2020, and she brought energy. She does amazing things. She's also founder of Bike, Bike, Bike Ride, ride for, for Black Lives uh, in Fort Collins, where it started there. And so any of y'all are going to be welcome for our ride in Fort Collins. In July. July 20. Eight. Eight, uh, July, July 8th this year. Yeah, FOCO is the two weeks later. Yeah. <laughs> July 8th. Um, Alicia, you are an absolute powerhouse. Do you want to say anything? Sure. I'll be super quick. Um, for those that don't know my background, I come uh, to ride for racial justice as a law enforcement officer. Um, I served as a police officer in Fort Collins for eight years. So when George Floyd happened, there was a torment inside where I've been living in two worlds, a black woman in a blue uniform. And I had no way, no outlet of being able to, to express my voice and the pain that I felt, not only um, for the people who look like me outside of that uniform, but also those of us in the uniform that were trying to humanize that badge. And I used the power of the bicycle to unite my community together. And this is how I got involved with Ride for Racial Justice. And the bicycle has been so powerful that in October, I retired from law enforcement and I now work in the bike industry full time, bringing the love and the freedom of bicycle to all. So. <laughs> I'm so thankful for the team. I'm so thankful for all of you being here today. That's it. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> Absolutely crushed it, Alicia. Um, we have one of our board members who's not here, Moss. He's, he's got some work going on. I think he's across the pond in, in Europe Italy. right now. Don't feel bad for him. He's in Florence, Italy. Which, uh, <laughs> we do miss him, though. We bummed he's not with us. We do have another one of our board members who is here. This is Ruben Mercado. Ruben? So, Ruben, so if you look right now, you see a few different jerseys. Ruben was one of our athletes last uh, last year for our Steamboat program. Um, in 2022, he raced Steamboat. Uh, he's from Louisville and just an absolute positive powerhouse, able to do so many things. And we asked him if he would maybe join us as a board member this past year. And uh, he's with us. And Ruben, you want to say a couple words? No, actually. I want to ride. <laughs> All right, Ruben wants to ride, so he's not going to delay it any further. All right, that's that's good. We did bring in another alumni member as a board member. She's uh, Dr. Allison Higgins Bottom. She's out in California, so she's not here today. But again, she was part of our program last year and brought her in. We have another big unit here. We got Martin Jones who is helping us coordinate with all of our 2023 Steamboat athletes. You're a Denver resident. Yep. And uh, 2021. No, last year. Uh, no, 2022 as well. 20, Man, you guys, we got a good crew right. out of that 2022. <laughs> we got some good athletes. Hey, but we've got some 21 athletes in the house. Yeah. And we have Juan Ocampo right here, our 2021 repping us up in Hello. Boulder County. Come on up, Juan. He broke down from Boulder with me and a few others. Juan's doing great things. If you ride, uh, if you like the trails in Boulder uh, for riding, hiking, riding, you might see him out there. That's that's kind of what he does on his daily job. And Sandra, you can't escape being called out. You may not walk up here because you're going to choose not to. You've been invited though. Sandra is uh, Marcus's partner, and she absolutely helps tie us all together and do a lot of great things. So. While what started us was a negative event, we're doing positive things. And we need to keep moving forward and creating more good things. So hopefully have some conversations with friends, with coworkers, with people out there, and let's just keep moving the needle forward, all right? Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Neil. So, you know, we seem to be like a good act. 
I used to talk first and then pass it to Neil because I was always long-winded. Now he's long-winded and I'm the short one, so. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about quick little logistics on what we're gonna do today. So uh, we've got the Slow Cruise family ride out of here. Um, so part one is we've got the community ride. So we'll start here. We'll end up cruising through town. Eventually we'll get over to East High School and then to City Park. And there's a Martin Luther King statue there. We take our annual photo there. So we will all show up and take our, our usual selfie. And then we'll cruise out of City Park. And then once we hit Mont View, um, there's the fast crew, um, whomever they want to be. They can, can cruise down um, Mont View all the way up to Anschutz, cruise through Anschutz, come back around, hit MLK, and they'll be back down here. So that's 20 miles. The 10 mile route's the one that I'm gonna go on. Amy and Martin are gonna be leading the uh, quick crew on our 10 miles. And I think, I don't know if you're gonna roll with them or not, Micah, but um, that'd be great. And then we'll all meet back here, but just enjoy the time, talk to each other, um, just talk. Actually, enjoy the sun, enjoy the ride. There's a beautiful place we've got here. And other than that, go Nuggets! <laughs>
Amy, Neil, you two know, know each other yet? Well, we oh my gosh, we you two met, need to know. We met while well, <laughs> at the So is this the first time riding with the crew? It is. It is? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah? I ran, yeah, I ran, I did it last year. Did you? Okay, cool. Excellent. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. And your names? I'm Sarah. Sarah. Leslie. Leslie. I'm John. Nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you Thanks for coming out this morning. Yeah, thank you for doing this. Yeah. Such a beautiful morning. <laughs> After all these days of rain, we're like, okay, please. We lucked out on the weather today. Yes, for sure. the picture that made us famous when we first started. So thank you, Ben. Yes. You guys are making a story. We're just capturing it. All right. Hey. You, you get us all in there? In three, two, one. Yes. 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 Thank you. Oh, I didn't know you were rocking out to music too. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. This is so much fun. This is so much fun. It's good to see everybody coming out. Yay. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Hey. How are you two? How are Super you? Good. Fantastic. Is <laughs> this your first ride. ride with the group? It is. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Cool. So what made you decide to show up today of all days? Our teammate, Martin, who is in charge of planning the ride, invited, yeah. us, invited us. So we said, hey, why not? I'll Very show cool. Up. <laughs> Very cool. That's great. So your teammate, Martin, is, is part of the crew that's yeah. helping get this together. Excellent. And which... Uh, you say teammate, what team? Uh, we have a team that's doing a charity ride yeah? in Copper this summer. So oh, fantastic. Yeah, yep. What's the team name? Uh, Burton's take, Books. Yeah, Burton's Books. <laughs> fantastic. That's yeah. great. And your names are? Leah. Leah? Aquila. Aquila. I'm John. Thank you so much for coming out here today. Of course, we, we're lucky John. with the weather. Yeah, gosh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know, given the, the rain that we've been getting recently, I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope it doesn't rain. It's rained out, yeah. <laughs> That's great. And when is the um, the ride up at Copper? Uh, July 15th. Yep. Oh, fantastic. Excellent. Right around the corner here. I'll, I'll be back in town. Okay. Yeah, excellent. Nice. See you then, John. Very good. Take care. Thank Thanks.
this is a smart choice. So Marcus, you were just telling me you grew up in this neighborhood. Yeah, I did. I grew up here in Park Hill. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And uh, so you, you you have memories of riding your bike around here Ride as a kid. Riding my bike around here, and this is Smiley. Yeah. Like middle school, it was Smiley Junior High when we were kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yep, this was us. That was wow, fantastic. And we could actually walk. Yes. To yes. School. We walked to school. Yes. Which is crazy, right? Well, it's crazy now. Yeah. I mean, in other societies, in other countries, it's not crazy. I mean, no. people still do it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you go to East High as well? Went to East High School, so Fantastic. you got to see my two schools. Yes. Yeah, the two cool, coolest I schools in I the world. I love it. I love it. Yes, indeed. Fantastic. Yeah, I love, uh, you know, just you know, seeing the vibrancy and seeing kids starting to ride again yeah. in this neighborhood. I was yeah. back here last year. Yeah. Same thing. It was neat yeah. to see you know, kids getting around to school and yep. so slowly but surely we're getting kids back on bikes. Slowly. Yeah. You know, the, the sad part is, is that bikes are still unaffordable. Yes. You know, to yes. most families. Yep. And you know, we need to do something about that because bikes don't need to cost thousands and thousands of dollars for for families, right? There's Precisely. Gotta be, yeah. There's got to be a way to yeah. get a bike into a kid's hand. Yeah. And, yeah, it does, and it doesn't and it doesn't have to be a fancy bike no, like that. Doesn't have to be. It, I mean, just a bike for transportation. I mean, we have a model right here, yeah. an awesome bike for transportation. Yeah, that's it. That's a nice swim. On one right there. That's right. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. The simple, simple bikes, simple and bikes. you know, bikes for transportation bikes for, for getting, transportation. getting to school, getting to your friend's house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To the ballpark if you happen to, to play park, <laughs> so. you know, or, or go to you know your extracurricular activities yes when yes. we were kids we were always yeah. going thank you you know, to the, you know to play some sort of sport or we'd have after school programs or something like that yeah and if they were in the neighborhood like here we could we usually walk to, to a smiley yeah but when we went to high school we had bikes and we rode down to east yeah you know walk home or we take yeah. a bus or something like that yeah you know? yeah now, is, is that an initiative that y'all are, are considering is, a tr you know, trying to Still get safe. more uh, kids on bikes and get yes. more bikes in kids' hands? Bikes and kids, that's one part. Mm -hmm. We've got a pretty, <laughs> we're trying to sketch a broad path yeah, yeah. for our future, but right. it's education, right. you know, for the community. And we look at ourselves as kind of like the, uh, we want to be the NAACP of cycling. Yeah, right? absolutely. So. We encourage bikes for sport, but we also encourage this sport to help get rid of some of these health disparities that are affecting our community. Absolutely, right? yeah. Diabetes, hypertension, yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah. So if we can get the kids on the bikes, then the parents will want to ride too. Right. As long as we can provide that that easy way to get a bicycle. Yeah. And then the other part is. Um, is for us is we need to get a uh, brick and mortar that is what we want to try to have in 2025 right so we can house our bikes okay so we can have a computer lab so we can have a training facility and all this stuff right but we're not doing this because we want to turn somebody into a next racer in the tour de france sure that's not the point yeah the point is to encourage healthy lifestyle through cycling but give opportunities to those who have not had an opportunity because bikes are expensive right yep. you know my you know you it's so nice to ride through the neighborhood i grew up in my parents bought my first bike for five bucks right that yeah. just shows you how old i am yeah. you know but me too yeah <laughs> but that was a five five dollar coaster bike right right which yeah. i believe we can still do yeah yeah right yeah i think we can still do that yeah for sure so you know yeah. the purpose of all these rides is just to to show up yeah right to show up as a community to show that, that we're relevant and just let everyone else know that you can do this sport right you don't have to be fast you just have to get out and, and, and have a good time yeah and get to smiling and stuff like a little kid up here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sitting there smiling. That's the cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. And really the transition of, you know, getting kids on bikes, you know, for everyday purposes really paves the way, 
that if they really enjoy it, then that could be something they want to do for sport. Yes. But you know, it, it yes. starts as transport, starts and then transport. and then goes to sport. And and you know the other challenge, and I think I touched on it earlier, it's is getting the parents involved yes. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Or or vice versa. Maybe the parents riding the bike, and the kid doesn't want to, but the kid sees the mom and dad exercising, and then they get motivated. Right. Yeah. So it can work both ways. It can work both ways. Yeah. And the other thing to your health disparities side of oh it too, yeah. is if we get kids riding and they have a lifelong love for it and continue into adulthood, that could have a tremendous impact on their health and well-being. Yes. You know, decades down the road. Decades down the road. And you know the way the way the insurance companies are, are tracking things nowadays, you know, all the biometrics and all this stuff and and you know insurance rates go through the roof if you're not healthy. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. You know, and I don't think anyone wants to start out being unhealthy. Right. We just need to educate proper choices or different choices. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly. Well, Marcus, thank you so much for hey. chatting on the bike here. I'll hey. put the camera away and pay attention to ah. what we're doing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations, guys. Woohoo! <laughs> Come on through! <laughs> and he lost it there. He just spent all his energy on the morning stage and the breakaway, but hey, one day, even one stage in the other was not pretty darn All right, congratulations! Yes! Yes! And the, the 20 mile crew is still coming. That's okay. They're still coming. We're did, faster than they are. Did you, did you see the. Uh, the weather coming their way too? Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and for the, the folks that rode down from Boulder, yeah. they got to giddy up. They got to giddy up, for sure. Up. Yeah. For sure. Hey, right up. here. Yes. Congratulations, Thanks, sir. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Good to, good to see right. this come together. Thank you. We'll see you soon.